Hey everybody, welcome back to Chris's Trains and Things. Welcome back to the basement. So today we're gonna to take a deeper dive into these new Atlas Multimax auto carriers were just delivered here in June of 2023. And we ordered these in I think July of 2021. So it's been a long time, long time coming. We did a quick, just running video of a few of these last week, but I think it's time we dive in because they deserve all the attention that they can get. Today we're going to dive a little bit closer into these. We're going to look at some of those details and some of the flaws that I've had on my units that I've had here. But guess what? When we have issues with things that are manufactured, we can go to the manufacturer and usually get those things fixed. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing here with mine. So again, these are the Atlas Multimax auto carriers. And what that means is they're not the standard auto carrier that Lionel made before. They're a completely different tooling because they're a completely different type of car. These were designed by Greenbrier companies in 2013. So I've had a lot of people talk about like, well, we're we gonna see any other road names or anything like that other than what we've got here. Well, we hopefully will at some point, maybe we'll see some Fairmax or CSX, you know, uh, maybe uh, Canadian National as well, but we're not gonna find Conrail or Southern or anything like that because those companies didn't exist when these were created. Now, the older Lionel versions from a few years ago are an older type of auto carrier. These are the Multimax, and what that means is there was a, a, these are created that they can have two or three levels. So these are the bi-level, so it's, you, I'll say bi there for bi-level, so there's two levels here. But the Atlas had these designed that those levels could actually be moved, interchanged, and you could add three if you wanted to add, just have cars in here, or two if you're running SUVs and trucks. Now. Atlas had some struggles when they designed these. They were pretty forward about that right before delivery. I think that's probably part of the big delay in having these things be delivered. You see the end of these cars are hinged and these doors are supposed to open up. In fact, there's a little operating latch here as well for those doors. And you could open the doors up and then you can move the levels up or down. But unfortunately, they were having issues with the hinges and keeping the doors closed and then preventing them from breaking during the shipping process. So. Atlas made the executive decision to just glue the doors shut so that way they could actually get these things delivered because it was two years in the making. People were asking lots of questions about where were these things. And so that was a big pitfall of this design is they just couldn't master the hinge and keeping the door closed and keeping it from breaking in that shipping process. One of the other issues that I've had on mine are the one of the trucks on mine. There's brake detailing on these. So if we look a little bit closer here, you'll see there's like the brake pad detailing. It might be easier to see in the light. Some brake pad detailing underneath here. One of mine was actually broken. It was on one of my CP units. And if we flip it over, you can kind of get a better view of that detailing. So it's right here and it's kind of pushed into the, tr the, the truck assembly. It's a separate piece that's kind of pushed in place. Mine was bent and broken out. And so I didn't notice that when I put it on the track. And I was having a lot of issues tracking through different areas of my layout because of that. And so I was able to, I ended up having to just pull it out. It was broken halfway out anyway, so I pulled it out and it's been fine. And honestly, that's not a huge detail. So you're probably not going to see too much of that anyway as we kind of go through this. Um, you know, if you're running these, you're not going to see that brake pad too much. But that was a bummer. Um, I did contact Atlas to get a new truck for that. And then one of my buddies also mentioned he's had some issues with his couplers, just, I guess, uncoupling or so on. They do seem to have cheapened up on the couplers themselves. The trucks are plastic. They're not, from what I can tell, they're plastic. They're very light. Um, you know, this is just, it just seems a little flimsy for me. You know, Lionel has the kinematic couplers, which I think would have probably been a better design for this. Now, obviously, they don't, those are probably proprietary for Lionel. And then they didn't have that design built in. Uh, to these to these auto carriers, which is kind of a bummer, but that's one one of the other things that I would complain about. But they have been tracking fine since I fixed the brake issue, and the detailing on these is pretty nice. So let's dive a little bit closer in. We'll look underneath it as well and talk about all those neat details. So the, the detailing on the bottom, just if you if you look underneath the brake detailing, this is the BNSF version. You see all the the hosing and things like that for the brakes. Now, these are these are quite heavy. These are have a die-cast metal frame underneath and then an ABS plastic body. They weigh about three pounds, three ounces, the Lionel version, 
one pound, nine ounces. So these are significantly heavier, which allows them to be part of a really long consist and not tip over when you're going around a curve. The Lionel versions are a little light. They have a tendency to fall off or get pulled off of a curve just because of their length and the fact that their, their center of gravity just isn't there. These things have really nice low center of gravity because of that design. There's also some really significant detailing along the sides here as well. You'll see the like the chain detailing in here and so forth. So really nice detailing there. And then all of the legible writing markers, the just uh, identifying and warning signs and things like that. Even if we spin around here to look at the doors, lots of nice legible detailing. So really, really well done. These things just look fantastic as they're going around the layout. Now, Atlas offered five road names and four road numbers for each road name. So do the math, you could have gotten 20 of these with I was able to pick up one of, at least one of each. I've got three BNSF, one is not here yet. I've got two CP, another one's on the way. I've got one Norfolk Southern, one NS with another NS on the way, and then one of the KCS versions as well. So really uh, a great additions to my collection. And it's tough to just have one of these or two. Usually you see a big long auto rack train. And so I wanted to be able to put that together. And I don't think these are gonna be made anytime soon again. They have sold out in most stores. There's a few stores that still have some left. And then as pre-orders don't get purchased, if people cancel their pre-orders, you'll see those pre-orders go back onto Hobby Shop. So keep your eye on some of the, the Hobby Shops online for a few extras. I know Legacy Station had a few. I believe Nick Smith had a few. Train World's got some KCS ones available. And I think we're going to see some more pop up. I also believe Charles Rowe had a few left as well, but not many. My buddy Jason out in Detroit sent a picture from Great Lakes Hobby. They had about six left on their shelves, and that was Saturday. So whether those are still there or not is going to be tough to tell. So really, really neat. I'm sure that we'll see these on eBay for well over the price. So I think they MSRP'd for right around $139, but pre-order was right around $125. In fact, you can still get them for under $130 from a store, and I don't think we'll ever, ever see that price again for this type of car. These things are monsters. They do require 072 curves. So you're gonna need a big layout to run these. They were available in three rail and two rail versions as well. So if you're a two rail person, you could always grab that. But again, Atlas, that's kind of what we've come to expect. Now, someone might ask, is this XMTH tooling? No, this is brand new tooling, master line tooling from Atlas. They are fully scale. They're very, very long. They take up a lot of space. And some people call these things layout shrinkers because you can put 10 of these on a layout and it makes your layout look super small because they take up the entire length of the layout. So, so here are your road numbers down here. Now you could cover those up with some graffiti or, I mean, these would be pretty easy to just replace that number. It is raised, so you can probably remove that decal, add another one and change those numbers yourself if you wanted to. So I'm not overly concerned about double road numbers when it comes to these cars. Just a close up of some of this detailing with the lever there and the chain. Just really, really fine details on this car. So here's the overhang on an 072 curve. Trying to get a view from above. Not the best lighting there, I apologize. But that kind of gives you an idea of that overhang. So not, not terrible. Come down here, you can kind of see the overhang there. Neat cars from Atlas, I do enjoy them. Just a few little errors and some things that I feel like they may be cheaped out on when it comes to the trucks. Perhaps that's something that we'll find a, a solution to fix later on. Who knows? But anyway, knockout job by Atlas. These get a, a nine, I'll give them a nine out of 10 on my scale system that I just invented off the top of my head, but really cool. So thanks guys for watching this. We're gonna watch these things go around the layout a little bit more and we'll wrap this one up. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't really. ZP9860 here. We are moving.